Everyone thought he was an F-ranked adventurer, but he finds a golden servant card which summons an SS-ranked goddess who helps him become the strongest. Kai is a young man who decides to become an adventurer in hopes of earning gold and glory. However, luck is not on his side as despite working tirelessly every day for the past two years, he is still stuck on the first floor of the dungeon. Just like any other day, Kai heads to the caves and begins creeping slowly towards a slime on the ground. But instead of reaching for a sword or knife, he pulls out an insecticide and sprays two bottles at the slime until it withers away and dies. He feels a surge of happiness at how adept he has become at killing slimes. It is expected. Considering this is his 999th slime kill since he started working in these dungeons like an NPC. Determined to reach the 1000 slime mark, Kai ventures deeper into the dungeon. Suddenly, he notices a golden slime sitting on a pillar. Excited by his luck at finding such a rare spawn for his 1000th kill, he quickly realizes this one isn't going to be easy. As he attempts to spray it with his bottle, the slime simply jumps off the pillar. Undeterred, Kai grabs a new and more powerful spray gun filled with pesticide and shoots at the slime, successfully killing it. He celebrates his 1000th kill and eagerly opens up his stats to check his rank only to realize his level remained the same, even though he killed a golden slime. He decides to let it go, hoping to get some good loot at least, but instead of a normal monocor, he finds a small golden card with a girl drawn on it. At first it confuses him, but soon he realizes that this is a servant card which is a very rare item. He checks the stats to realize that this servant is from the class of Valkyries and is named Sylph. He tries to hit her on Instagram, but finds out that there is no info about her online. He decides to get out of the dungeon first before researching anymore and starts heading back, while a group of adventurers walk past him with their amazing armor, which Kai can only look at with jealousy. He wonders whether he would ever be able to buy such a thing and heads over to the reception to get money in exchange for the slime cores. The receptionist, Hitsa gives him 500 yen for each slime core so 1500 yen in total, which is a disappointing amount. But Kai takes it and starts moving out. He suddenly stops and asks Hitsa whether she knows the value of a rare servant card, especially if the servant belongs to a divine class. Hitsa thinks for a while and claims that such a card would be very collectible and will be worth over a billion yen easily. He is shocked to hear that but keeps his mouth shut as he returns back towards his locker where he puts his stuff back before changing into everyday clothing and exits the area. It turns out that the dungeon is part of an amusement park where people can get membership and go inside to explore and find valuable items. Several children walk around in costumes talking about how they want to be an explorer once they grow up. But Kai is completely lost in his thoughts, still thinking about the card. While waiting for the train, he ends up meeting with his two friends Shinji and Hayato, and they all get onto a train. Kai tells them that he is still stuck at level 3 and asks them why they don't explore any dungeons. Hayato replies that two years ago, when they newly went to explore the dungeons, they ended up hitting the second floor, where they found a goblin. They thought it would be easy prey for them, but the goblin ended up beating the shit out of all of them alone. Ever since then both Shinji and Hayato decided that dungeons are not for them and they are happier exploring the other attractions with their passes. Later that night, Kai exits the train and starts walking back towards his home where he has dinner with his family and takes a bath before heading off to sleep. The next morning, he still wonders whether he should sell the card or not, as 1 billion yen can get him all the armor he wants and he can buy as many video games as he wants. His thoughts are broken by a voice which turns out to be his friend Katsu who asks where he was last night. He decides to lie and claims that he was at a party with Shinji and Hayato, but to his dismay, both of them end up spotting Kai and walk over. Kai immediately takes them aside and begs them to not tell Katsu that he went dungeon crawling yesterday, and they agree, but when Katsu asks them what they did at the party they ended up saying different things like crack, hookers and bowling. Katsu realizes that they are lying and asks whether Kai went to the dungeons once again but he manages to lie through his teeth and barely escapes. Later that day in school, he asks what his friends would have done with a servant card, and they immediately reply that they would have sold it, as it's worth a lot, and you can't summon a servant outside of the dungeons anyways. Kai thinks about whether he should sell the item, but when he goes to the dungeons that day, he decides to keep it for himself as he wants to become one of the strongest adventurers that anyone has ever seen. He hides away from the camera and takes out the card before calling out Sylphie, the Valkyrie to be her servant and follow her command. Suddenly the card starts glowing and a bright light emits from it, which transforms into a huge woman with feathery wings on her back and basketballs in the front. She seems to be in an ethereal form as she grabs Kai and disappears immediately. 
Kai is confused at what's happening, when suddenly he turns around to see a small lowly in armor standing beside him. He asks who she is, wondering if any kids got lost here, but the lowly replies that she is the Valkyrie Sylphie who will be his servant from now. Immediately all his hopes of becoming a strong adventurer shatter as he drops to the floor, regretting the fact that he didn't sell the card. He decides to pull his act together as he gets up and tells her that they need to hunt some slime. She immediately claims that she can sense some nearby, so Kai decides to test her intuition and tells her to lead him to the beast. Sylphie easily locates the slime, so Kai asks whether she can kill it for him, and she immediately agrees before going out in the open. Kai wasn't expecting much from such a small girl, but to his surprise, Sylphie conjures a lightning attack so devastating that for a moment Kai thought that the whole cave would collapse. Kai walks towards her, asking whether she is alright, but she starts blushing and claims that she is hungry and wants to eat something. Kai looks at her and remembers that the servants eat monocores, so he feeds the monocore of the slime to her, and she thanks him before claiming that there are some more slimes nearby. He asks whether she has regained her strength to which she nods her head before heading off. But Kai stops her and asks whether she can only detect slimes. Sylphie immediately claims that she can detect all the monsters and not just slimes, but after every battle she feels hungry and needs to eat a monocore. Kai does the calculation and realizes that it will be useless this way as they won't earn anything out of hunting slimes. He comes up with a plan and tells Sylphie to track the slimes down for him which she happily does, after which he uses his spray bottles to kill them one after the other. This seems to be the best way of operating as finding slimes is a task in itself. But this way, he can save his time by directly heading towards the targets and neutralizing them with his cheap insecticide sprays. After killing a bunch of them, he ends up leveling up to level 4 and gains a new passive skill called the Slime Slayer, which gives him 50% increased stats when fighting against slimes. He seems disappointed with his new skill, but Sylphie raises his spirits by claiming that getting a skill is an achievement in itself. He looks at her and smiles, thanking her for the help and claims that he will be returning home now as it's getting late. Sylphie looks at him and asks whether he will summon her soon again, and he promises to summon her as soon as possible after which he recalls her back to her servant card. He starts heading back and stops at the reception to sell the mana cores, which shocks Hitsu as she claims that he beat the daily slime extermination record by a large margin and asks how he do it. Kai lies and tells her that he just got lucky and takes his 1-5 Zizanzen Yen reward before heading home. Later at night, he thinks about heading over to the second level of the dungeon as even though goblins are scary, he believes that Sylphie is much stronger and with her he can defeat them. That night, he dreams about a childhood memory where he sat eye front of the TV with Katsu, while the reporter interviewed Katsu's dad who was a famous adventurer. And that interview fills Kai with a feeling of amazement as he decides to follow in the same footsteps and become an adventurer himself. The next morning, he wakes up with a newfound conviction and confidence as he heads out to the second floor alongside Sylphie and the new sword and shield he bought with his money. He makes up his mind that he will keep clearing all the dungeons on his way to becoming the most famous adventurer in the world. They enter the cave and walk or a while when Sylphie realizes that something is wrong and asks Kai whether everything is okay, as he is looking very pale and is shaking really badly. Kai looks terrified of this cave, but lies to Sylphie that he is just very excited, but the moment Sylphie tells him that she can sense a goblin nearby, he immediately turns around and starts running. Sylphie is confused and asks what the hell is he doing, but Kai lies to her face, claiming that he has some urgent work back at home. He suddenly remembers Katsu's dad in the TV interview and stops, as he decides that he can't forget his dream so easily, and grabs his wooden sword before telling Sylphie to lead the way. They soon find the goblin, sleeping behind a giant rock. But Kai is too scared to do anything, so he asks whether Sylphie could kill it. She immediately agrees and heads out to chant her spell as the goblin wakes up ready to fight. But they are interrupted by Kai who jumps in between with his sword and tells Sylphie that he changed his mind, but tells her to be ready to help him. He rushes towards the goblin but misses his sword strike as the goblin backs off. This time the goblin attacks and tries to ram Kai to the ground, but he blocks the hit with his shield at the last moment. They struggle for a while, but Kai slowly gains ground, 
and shoves the goblin away as it falls to the ground. Kai immediately tries to take advantage of that and rushes in with his sword, but even this time his sword strike is blocked by the goblin who grabs it and disarms Kai before jumping at him to finish the job. Kai falls backwards without any defenses, but remembers that he still has the sprays, so he quickly takes them out and shoots the spray at the monster's eyes. The goblin gets blinded by it, which gives Kai the chance to land the final blow, but as he gets the sword and rushes towards the goblin, he ends up tripping over a rock and falls to the floor and accidentally stabs him in the chest, killing the beast immediately. Silphy seems very happy as he congratulates Kai, but he is still too scared as he grabs the mana crystal, glad to be alive. Suddenly a golden glow emits from him, and he realizes that he has leveled up again. He checks the stats once again and finds out that he has gotten a new skill called the Goblin Slayer. He again has mixed feelings about such a shitty new skill, but decides that a skill is a skill and moves on. They go deeper in the cave where another goblin attacks them, but Silphy uses her defensive barrier to block the attacks completely, while Kai times his sword slash perfectly to kill the monster. Kai then kills his third goblin by using the spray bottle once again to blind the monster before killing it, while Silphy drags him once again to a new foe. Kai kills this goblin as well with a sword strike to the head and in the process, ends up ranking up to level 6. They start walking once again and Kai asks whether she knows anything about these dungeons, but Sylphie replies that she has no idea, and all she knows is that her sole purpose is to help her master. They move further inside where they find their final goblin of the day who attacks Kai, while Sylphie uses her lightning magic to destroy the beast. Kai feeds her the mana core before heading outside. He hands over the mana crystals to Hitsu. He again lies that it was simply a fluke and heads back home where his body finally gets so sore that he is unable to move from his bed. The next morning, he drags his ass to walk to the school alongside Katsu, who immediately realizes that he must have gone to the dungeons, but he refuses and claims that he was just doing some bodybuilding in the gym, and that's why he is sore. Katsu decides to let it go and starts walking once again. After reaching their classroom, Kai ends up telling Shinji and Hayato about his new adventures into the level 2 dungeons, and also that he killed four goblins. They are surprised to hear it, and are having trouble believing that Kai is telling the truth, but he promises them that he is not lying and claims that he is going to go even deeper today. After school, he goes back to the dungeons along guide Silphy and starts exploring the distant parts of the cave where they manage to kill goblins once again with beautiful teamwork. As Silphy blocked the attacks while Kai landed the killing blow, and sometimes when Kai got too tired, Silphy finished the monster with her lightning magic. After that expedition, he again slept like a log at night and the next day upgraded to a metal rod, which did much more damage to the goblins. But because of exhaustion, he ended up sleeping even in the classroom. This didn't stop him from his adventures however, as without fail he went into the dungeons, day after day, killing goblins with any means necessary till he reached level 10 which was a big milestone for him. This time he gets a special skill called Divine Love, which boosted his stat growth at every level. The boost directly depended on the amount of love and care a divine goddess showed him, so he immediately decides to confess how happy he is to be able to go on adventures with someone as cool as Sylphie. The poor lowly doesn't understand how big of a psycho manipulator this guy is and happily thanks him for being with him as she loves working alongside him. After that, the next monster they see, turns out to be a glowing skeleton, which they have never faced before. Kai tells her to stay alert, and she immediately deploys her magic barrier as the skeletons rushed at them to attack. He crashes against the barrier and starts trying to break through, but before he could do that, Kai decides to attack. Unfortunately, his attack does nothing, as his weapons are too weak for this rare spawn, so he asks Sylphie to deal with it, who immediately chants her spell and shoots a lightning bolt at it, killing it at once. This time the mana core that gets dropped turns out to be bright red in color. He wonders whether it could be rare, but decides to feed it to Sylphie anyway who claims that it was more tasty than usual. Later that day when he goes to Hitsu with a day's loot, he asks about the mana core dropped by the glowing skeleton, and she replies that it's a pretty rare drop and can easily fetch upwards of 2 million yen. Kai is devastated to hear that he could have been a millionaire, but Sylphie ended up eating his money. Hitsu tells him not to worry though, as if he encountered it once, there are good chances that he will meet it again. That night he wonders about the lost money, but decides that it doesn't matter as he still leveled up a bunch. This makes him wonder whether he can move on to the third floor now. But he knows that on the third floor, the enemies appear eye groups and can be much more dangerous. Keeping this in mind, the next day he tells Sylphie that for a while he wants Sylphie to simply watch and not do anything else. She gets scared thinking that she did something wrong and apologizes. But Kai claims that he wants to go up to the third floor, 
but he is scared that he will end up depending too much on her to save him. So he wants to get stronger first. Sylphie seems relieved to hear that and bids him good luck, when suddenly a goblin appears from behind a rock. Kai confidently tells Sylphie to watch from behind as he deals with it, but the plan backfires and he ends up getting injured pretty badly forcing him to buy potions from Hitsu, which blows away all his savings. That night he thinks about how he needs a lot of monocores to feed Sylphie as well as better equipment, so he decides to go back to square one and enters the first floor once again to kill as many slimes as possible, gaining skills, levels and monocores. After several days of working his ass off in the dungeons alone, he finally is able to collect enough mana cores that he feels comfortable to move on to the third floor. Before they could leave the cave though, Sylphie claims that she can sense a different kind of slime. And her intuition seems on point as Kai notices a silver slime not far away. He immediately jumps into action and rushes the slime with his spray gun, but the slime is faster and dodges away. Thankfully, Sylphie was ready nearby and uses her lightning magic to hit the slime, immediately killing it. To their surprise the slime ends up dropping another servant card which is beyond lucky. Kai picks up the card to see that it is a demon rank card for a servant named Luce. He looks around to see Sylphie who looked visibly upset to see the card, as he realizes that demons and goddesses must not go well together. But even after that, he decides to follow his own wishes, without even consulting with Sylphie, and summons the demon servant right there. A huge red flame envelops them completely from which a huge demon lady emerges and flies straight through Kai in her ethereal form just like what happened with Sylphie. He looks down once again and spots another lowly. But this time she has bat wings and horns on her head, realizing that now his party will be unstoppable with a demon and goddess on her side. The lowly looks at him and introduces herself as the demon Viscount Luke. Before asking Kai whether he is the one who called her, Kai asks whether she can transform into a grown woman, but she can't which really disappoints him as he falls to his knees sad because he always wanted a demon mommy. Regardless, he gets up and introduces himself, but Luke immediately starts trash-talking him as she thinks he looks very weak and unreliable. Kai is completely shocked at this, while Syl hides behind him and with a meek voice, tells Luke that she shouldn't talk to her master like that. Luke tells her that all demons have very sharp tongues, so don't take anything she says very seriously. This makes Syl feel better as she introduces herself to the little demon. Luke inspects her from all around, immediately recognizing her as a goddess-class servant. Immediately after, she turns towards Kai and asks him for food as she is hungry. Kai tells her that she hasn't even done anything yet. How can she be hungry? But just then Syl senses a slime nearby and informs them about it. They hide behind a rock to check whether it's a normal slime, but Luke doesn't have their caution as she walks out brazenly and summons a trident in her hand. She then creates a fireball and shoots it at the slime, which causes a huge explosion while Syl and Kai watch in awe. Kai walks up and feeds her the mana crystal, but she immediately asks for another one. Kai tells her that he doesn't have another, which annoys Luke as she claims that she doesn't like cheapskates. Kai tells her to show him another skill of her and promises to feed her a mana crystal for it. She sighs, but finds a goblin running towards her, so she uses her decay magic on it which completely destroys the goblin as it immediately starts rotting and falls to the ground with a sickening plop, making both Syl and Kai sick. Kai feeds her another crystal, which she really likes and immediately wants to go even deeper to hunt more monsters. Kai stops her and asks whether she knows anything about these dungeons, but she replies that she has no idea about anything in this world. He tells her that at the third level, the monsters start attacking in groups and to deal with that, they need better equipment. She doesn't seem to care much about it and still wants to go deeper, but Kai tells her that they will go on that level the next day. She still doesn't seem very keen on waiting for the next day, but somehow Kai and Syl manage to convince her, and she agrees to not wander any deeper in the cave today. The next morning, they enter the third level of the dungeons which is very scary for Kai, but he is confident in the abilities of his servants and has also bought some new equipment like a crossbow. Syl claims that the crossbow looks really nice, and Kai seems pleased with it as he claims that it was pretty expensive. Suddenly they hear a growl and spot two hellhounds around the corner looking for prey. Kai decides to take the first shot after coming out from the cover, but the bolt misses the monsters and they immediately start running towards him at full speed. He tries to reload his crossbow, but it's too late as the hounds are almost on top of him. Thankfully, Syl comes to his defense and creates a barrier that blocks the attack, while Luke comes out of the cover with her flaming trident in hand and shoots a fire blast at the hounds, blowing them up to pieces. After that, Kai feeds her a mana crystal, while she asks for another one. 
Kai tells her to wait as he can't feed her all the mana crystals so they start venturing deeper in the cave. Soon they come upon demonic boars running towards them at full speed, but Luke is ready as usual, and with a single flick of her trident, she completely blows the boars up. Unfortunately, one of the boars ends up dodging the attack and runs out of the fire at full speed. Luke gets ready to land another attack, but Kai tells her that he will deal with it and takes aim. This time when he shoots, the bolt actually hits the mark and blinds the boar in one eye. But this is nowhere enough to defeat the demonic boar, who gets even more mad and runs at Kai to get his vengeance. Cal tries to reload his crossbow, but ends up tripping over to the floor, but before the boar could attack him, he manages to shoot another shot, which hits the boar right in the head, killing it immediately, just inches away from Kai. Sil praises him for his first kill on this floor, and the fact that he became level 11 now, while Luke makes fun of him for falling over and then asks for more mana crystals. After leaving the dungeons for the day, he starts walking out when he overhears some girls talking about how they reached level 6 dungeons because they made a party instead of going solo. This makes him wonder the next day at school whether he would also grow much faster if he had a party. That day he goes over to the dungeons, and as usual Luke is in full swing using her fire blast to demolish any monsters that would come in her way, while this time even Syl shows her lightning magic to stun the demonic boar to death. Luke doesn't want anyone to outdo her so she immediately uses her decay spell to kill two more rat monsters which makes both Syl and Kai's stomachs upset, but they get their share of mana crystals while Luke asks for more food as expected. They keep killing even more monsters after which they get their rewards of mana cores, but Kai notices that Syl seems a little off. He asks if everything is fine, but she immediately changes the topic by claiming that she saw some more hellhounds nearby. That evening after Kai was back at home, he wonders whether Syl is avoiding him for some reason when the thought comes to his mind that maybe because Syl is a goddess and Luke is a demon, they are not compatible, and he wonders what he will do if they both come to blows and decide to use their godly abilities against each other. This really scares the shit out of him, and he is unable to sleep that night sick with worry. The next morning while walking towards the school, Katsu meets up with him and asks whether he got any sleep last night. She tells him that if he is worried about something, maybe she can help him. This really touches his heart as he decides to use his friends as a scapegoat and claims that Shinji has two female friends. One of them is very sweet and nice, and the other one is a bit harsh. They don't seem to get along together, and he is worried that they will end up fighting. Katsu looks confused but asks whether the girls told him that they don't like each other, and if not, she suggests him to ask them directly. This is what Kai decides to do that day, as he only summons Sil in the caves, who looks around and asks where Luke is. Kai tells her that he hasn't summoned her as he wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her. Sil looks a bit flustered, but asks what is it about. So Kai decides to cut to the chase and asks whether she doesn't like Luke. Surprisingly enough, Syl tells him that's not the case, as she did find him a little intimidating at first. But when she told her not to take her words seriously, she ended up becoming her friend. And now she actually likes her a lot. Kai gets into her face and asks whether anything is bothering her. She shakes her head, claiming that nothing is bothering her. But Kai persists, claiming that she seems bothered by something and tells her that she is very important to him. This makes Syl a little emotional, and she tells him that lately he has been treating Luke much more nicely than her, and she wants to be treated the same way. Kai doesn't think that he has been treating them any different, but Syl claims that he is very nice to her, always talks a lot, and even gives her extra mana cores. She claims that before Luke came, he used to talk to her a lot but nowadays he mostly talks to Luke and not her. Kai realizes his fault and promises to treat her equally and talk to her more. Later he proves that he is a man of his word as he gives both Luke and Syl double mana cores and even praises Syl for her quick thinking that saved his life. This time Luke calls him out, claiming that he hasn't praised her this way, so he ends up praising her for the strong spell she used to kill the monsters. They soon move forward and Syl manages to kill some more hell monsters which makes her gain a level. Both Kai and Luke congratulate her and Kai decides to test her newfound stranglet. They go further into the cave where they find three hellhounds in a distance. Syl immediately goes out and uses her lightning spell to completely demolish all three of the hounds together. But while they were celebrating, Kai senses something and tells Syl to get her shield up. Immediately a monster boar comes out of the dust and starts attacking the shield. But the level 2 shield is way too tough for him. Meanwhile Luke takes out her trident to finish the job. But Kai tells her that he wants to handle it, and he shoots the boar in the head, killing it immediately. 
After that he feeds the manacores to Sil whose appetite has grown, and because of that he is barely able to sell any cores. He decides to head back to the level 1 dungeons to collect some cores with his spray, which surprises Hitza when he comes to sell it. She tells him that according to her he can climb up to the level 4 dungeons now, which surprises Kai. That night he checks the net for better equipment, but everything is too expensive for him, so he decides to head back into the dungeons the next day. While walking through the level 1 caves, he suddenly spots a rare slime once again and tells the two lolis to not let it escape. Both Luke and Syl surround the monster before using their spells together completely obliterating any signs of the slime's existence. This time, the slime ended up dropping a magic crystal. Kai happily picks it up and decides to use it, so he throws it to the ground and immediately ends up gaining a new magical skill called Water Strike. He decides to go and try this on the level 3 dungeons where he finds a pack of hounds. He tells Syl to create a barrier while Luke stays ready to kill the monster if it survives Kai's attack. The hound spots the party and immediately starts charging at them. So Kai stands his ground and shoots a water blast at him. To his absolute surprise, the water ball doesn't even scratch the hound as it shakes the water off and charges at them again. But thankfully Luke deals with it through her fire magic. Syl tries to cheer Kai up as she tells him that using magic is an achievement in itself. But Kai doesn't seem to be thrilled with his power and decides to head back home and think about how he can better use his newfound magic to defeat the monsters. The next day, Kai goes to the dungeon again to practice his water ball spell. He first shoots a water ball at the wall at a very slow pace and it doesn't do anything other than wet the wall. Kai is already exhausted by using the spell just once, but he keeps on practicing. The second time, he shoots the water ball as fast as he can. He and Syl are happy about the accomplishment, but Luke is not impressed. In using just two water balls, Kai loses all his energy and collapses to the ground. He soon returns home and falls asleep as soon as he lies on the bed. In his sleep, Kai sees a dream of his childhood where he is watching Katsu's dad on TV, and how that made him dream of becoming an adventurer like him. Motivated by his dream, he goes to the dungeon the next day and begins practicing water ball strikes again. He has gotten remarkably faster today and he shoots many water balls at the walls of the dungeon before finally running out of gas. He takes a short rest, but just as he recovers his stamina, he gets back to training. This time, he tries manipulating the shape of the water ball and turns it into a cube. Thrilled by his success, Kai keeps experimenting and giving different shapes to the water ball, but he soon gets tired and falls on his back. As he is walking out of the dungeon mindlessly, he trips and falls into the arms of an adventurer. He immediately gets back and apologizes. But the mature mommy adventurer asks him if he is fine. Kai says that he is perfectly good and takes his leave with that. But the mommy is worried about him because he doesn't look okay. Her teammates, however, are quite eager to see that there are people who work so hard, and they head into the dungeon. Later, Kai sleeps in the class, and when the teacher wakes him up, he loudly says that he will do his best in training today, causing the entire class to burst into laughter. During the break, his friends approach him and ask what was he saying about the training earlier. Kai tells them that he is practicing a vital skill for his success in the dungeon. But just then, Katsu comes there. She asks if he is training to enter the dungeon. But Kai twists his words and says that he was talking about dance practice. Katsu is relieved on learning that and she just asks Kai not to overdo it. She asks him to show her his dance performance one day and then leaves the boys alone. The next day, Kai goes to the dungeon again and uses his water ball in actual combat. He shoots a goblin with it, but instead of bursting like usual, the water ball stays firm in shape and blocks all the breathing holes of the goblin, choking him to death. Both Syl and Luke praise him, but then Kai notices that he is not getting any exp from the monsters on the third floor anymore, which means it is time for them to descend to the fourth floor. Kai thinks that since he is going to the fourth floor, he needs some good equipment and he decides to buy something that had been in his wish list for a long time. The next day, he comes wearing a tight bodysuit, and while Syl says that it looks good on him, Luke shatters his pride by telling him that he looks lame. Kai tells her that the suit is expensive and high-end, because it is made of carbon nanotubes that protects him from most of the damage while being thin and lightweight. He says that the bodysuit has excellent protection against arrows and other piercing damage. Along with that, he has a magic output amplifying bracelet that will make even his weak spells a bit more powerful. However, he has not tried it out because there was no option for that. Kai begins showing other items he has bought like a potion, but Luke drags Syl away because she is getting bored of Kai's display. They head to the fourth floor eventually, where Syl detects a large and creepy monster coming towards them. Before Kai can check the monster encyclopedia to see what is he going to face here, 
a giant cockroach comes there, and both the girls panic and cling to each other. They blast out magic spells constantly at the roach monster as they rush through the dungeon, and Kai runs after them because he is afraid of being left alone. Syl and Luke are resting after exerting themselves, and almost attack Kai who comes running towards them. Syl runs to hug Kai, telling him that she was afraid, but Luke is still putting on her Tsun Dara act, and saying that she was not afraid of the lowly bugs. Syl then apologizes to Kai for abandoning him and running away, and pleads with him to scold her. He replies that he is not angry because they cleared the fourth floor in no time because of their rampage, and he has collected the monocores from all the defeated monsters. Luke says that she is not eating those disgusting crystals obtained from bugs, but she is too hungry to refuse them. The crystals taste as awful as the girls were expecting. And then Kai says that since they have time, they should scout out the fifth floor a bit. Sil senses a sand monster and a mud monster nearby, and Kai takes aim at them with his crossbow. His first arrow misses and the second one goes right through the sand monster, who immediately attacks him. Kai yells Sil's name, and she promptly sets up a barrier to protect him. Kai believes that the two monsters are immune to physical attacks, so he turns to Luke for help, and she annihilates them with her fire attack. Kai asks her if she needs to replenish her mana with the crystals, but neither Luke nor Syl want to eat the disgusting thing. They keep exploring the fifth floor, but there seem to be no more monsters nearby. Just then, Syl spots an odd spot on a wall, but Kai can find nothing special about it. Syl decides to blast a hole in the wall using her lightning attack and surprisingly, it leads them to a secret passageway. They begin heading in and Kai advises the girls to be careful to not step on any traps. But just as he was saying this, Luke tells him that it is too late for the warning. She is trapped on a trap trigger, and an arrow is shot as a result. However, instead of going towards Luke it hits Kai instead, and he rolls on the ground, writhing with pain. His servants are worried about him, but Kai returns to normal in a few minutes, because his bodysuit protected him from any serious damage. They keep walking ahead, but Luke steps on yet another trap tile. Kai steps backwards to avoid the arrow this time, but gets Pikachu'd instead. However, he is completely fine after the shock, and even feels a bit energized. Luke tells him to stop making her worry, but when Kai asks if she was worried about him, she defaults to her Tsun Dara mode. Soon, they reach a huge gate with a painting on it, and Syl can feel an overwhelming presence from the other side. Kai decides to head home, but the two girls are not going to let him do that. He tries opening the gate, but it doesn't budge, so Syl just blasts it with her lightning attack, and Kai sincerely hopes that he is not charged with destruction of dungeon property. Anyway, they head inside and encounter two boss class monsters. One is a red ogre, and another is a giant slime. Kai is not going to back away when they have come this far, and he tells his girls to take down the red ogre first. They shoot their lightning and fire attacks at the ogre, but it is virtually unscathed because it is immune to skill damage. He suddenly lunges towards them, but Syl's barrier skill blocks his attack. Kai tells Luke to handle the slime, and then tries hitting the red ogre with his crossbow. Each arrow he shoots at the ogre significantly reduces its health, but then he runs out of arrows. The enraged ogre starts thrashing the barrier, and on the other hand, Luke is also having a hard time dealing with the giant slime alone. As a last-ditch effort, Kai decides to rely on his water ball. He manifests a water ball, but it freezes because of the effect of the bracelet. He shoots the ice ball at the red ogre and whittles down its defense, but he then realizes that he will soon run out of mana. So Kai manipulates the shape of his ice balls and turns them into sharp icicles that deal much more damage to the red ogre. With the last three shots he had left, Kai manages to bring down the red ogre, and now only the slime is left. The slime is about to hit Luke, when Kai defends her with his shield. He holds the slime back and asks Syl to prepare her divine spear attack. His shield and gear starts to melt, but then Syl charges at the slime with her divine spear and pierces through it. However, even that doesn't do much damage to the monster. Kai wants to give up, but remembering his hero, he charges ahead, dodging the slime's attacks and then uses his good old bug spray, because even though it is giant, the monster is still a slime. The slime's health constantly decreases, and Syl guards Kai using her magic barrier. After Kai runs out of the first two bottles, he pulls out two extra strong bug sprays from his bag and lets it all out on the slime, that finally hits zero GP and dies. The girls happily hug Kai, but hurt his injured shoulder in the process that he fixes by drinking the potion. Luke also levels up just after that, and then Kai checks out his stats to find that he has also leveled up a lot. He quickly moves to collecting the mana cores and finds the red core of the ogre which will surely fetch a good price. When he tries searching for the slime's core, he finds a rare grade magic sword instead, 
which looks more like a steak knife than a magic sword. Later, Kai takes the monocore of the Red Ogre to Hitsa, who is curious about where he found it. He tells her the story about finding a hidden dungeon on the fifth floor and defeating the boss there. Hitsa tells him that they will immediately check the dungeon out, and then tells Kai that the red monocore is worth a lot of money. He is happy to hear that, and then Hitsa gives him another good news, asking him to join the event next week, where they will be trying to clear the seventh floor as a group. The next week, he goes to the event, where he runs into the three girls from the other day. Their leader introduces herself as Eri, the pink cat girl is Miku, and the last one is Hikari. Kai also introduces himself, and wonders if they are going to be members of the same party. If you liked this video, you will definitely love the story about this F-ranked loser, who turns out to be the strongest adventurer by killing monsters.